دينا هم على صلاتهم دائمون but those who establish their prayers with complete concentration who engage their ruh in the prayer these are the people they will not be impatient they will not be hasty people they will not be people who have no stability in their life if they make a decision they will be wisdom in the decision they will be ferocious in the decisions who are these people those who establish their prayer with the physical form of salah and the ruh of salah This is that prayer that gives you the hakiki success. Allah Jalla wa'ala says in another Quranic verse, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Indeed, successful are those people who are khashi' in the prayer. Those people succeeded. Who succeeded? Allah Jalla wa'ala says, those mu'minun, those believers who are khashi' in the prayer, who have khashu in the prayer. So not everyone who prays these five times daily prayers will be successful. Who is successful? And the Mufassirun say, this success is not only success in the hereafter, this is also success in dunya. Allah will bless them with success. Who? The Quran says, those who have khushu in their prayer. This Quranic verse, when Allah Jalla wa'ala created Jannatul Adan. Jannatul Adan is one of the beautiful levels, great levels of Jannah. Beautiful rivers flow under Jannatul Adan. When Allah created Jannatul Adan, Allah addressed Jannatul Adan and Allah said, O Jannatul Adan, speak. And this is what Jannatul Adan said thrice, three times. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Indeed, prosperity is for those who in their prayers are khashi' who engage their ruh in the prayer and fear Allah Jalla wa'ala in the prayers. This was said three times by Jannatul Adan, by one of the great maqams and levels of Jannah. So brothers and sisters in Islam, these were some Quranic verses and a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam about the significance, about the importance of engaging your ruh in the prayer, of engaging your ruh in your salah. Sayyidina Shaykh Shihabuddin Sawwadi Rahimahullah talks about the linguistic meaning of Salah. He says this word Salah, Sad, Lam, the word Salah, Salah, Yusalli in Bab Tafid. He says if you look at the root letters of this word, it gives the meaning of fire. Salah denotes the meaning of fire. He says the reason why it's called fire, Salah, one of the linguistic meanings of Salah is fire. He says that if, if you place a a curled stick, if you place it, if you put it close to fire, it will make it straight. It will straighten a curled, a bent stick. If you place it close to the fire, the heat, the intensity of the fire will straighten it. He says, when a, when a believer has a rusty heart, a heart full of filth, and he starts establishing the prayer, the fire of the prayer, meaning the nur of the prayer will purify his heart. You bring a believer close to the prayer. This is one of the meanings of Salah Yusalli. The Arabs say Salah Al-Asa Bin Nar. That is one of the sayings of the Arabs. Salah Al-Asa Bin Nar. That the fire straightens a stick. So, if you want to be on the straight path on Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, then engage your ruh in your prayer and establish your prayer five times daily with Da'imun. After understanding the meaning of Da'imun, not just constantly praying, since you're taking our time for the prayer, think about your brothers and sisters in Islam. We are taking our time for our salah, from our worldly affairs, from our dunyavi commitments. If, you are, if you're working or you're in your college or university, it takes you five minutes to make wudu, 10 minutes to establish your prayer. That's 15 minutes in every prayer. So that's one hour, 15 minutes. Every day you are taking out this time for you to pray your salah. Now this is for those who are praying their salah, but they do not learn their salah and they do not learn the practical methods of falling in love with the prayer. They do not learn the practical methods of engaging their ruh in the prayer. I'm addressing those people now. Think about it. So many people, they, they actually read their salah. They take out time for salah and it doesn't take more time. If it takes you 15 minutes to pray, it will not take you 16 minutes to pray, 17 minutes you pray, not even a minute more than what you are already spending in the salah time. If you act upon these principles, which will make you fall in love with the prayer, which will engage your ruh in the prayer. So since you are actually taking out time, then why don't you try concentrating in the prayer? You are taking out time. You are making that commitment. 
you are at your workplace and then from if you're in your university you will go to your prayer hall and you will go and you will establish the prayer so since we are taking our time for the prayer then why do we want to be from those people about whom Allah says they are kusala, they pray lazily in a way that you look at them you say this lethargic person look at the way he's standing in the court of Allah if you are taking, making time for salah, but you're still establishing your prayer to show to other people, so people think that you have khushu in the prayer, so if we are making time for salah, let us not think that we can deceive our Lord. Who are you trying to fool? He knows the secret of our hearts. He knows everything that we are thinking about. And if we are praying to please other people, if we keep a roza, we go around telling people I was fasting. If we establish our prayers, we read our tahajjud, ishraq, ibadat, we go around telling people that we are making time. But we think that we can deceive Allah Jalla wa ala. Let us establish our prayers for the sake of Allah. Only for the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala. And for that, to engage our ruh in the prayer, we have to act upon certain principles. Brothers and sisters, sisters in Islam, let us begin with the 20 necessary principles for us to engage our ruh in the prayer. Remember, it's not all about what you do during the prayer. To engage our ruh in the prayer, it's not all about what we do during our salah. There are some things we have to do before our prayer. Some things during our prayer. Some things after our prayer in order for us to attain complete concentration in our salah. 20 points and these 20 points inshallah I will try to cover some points. First I will briefly go over the, the 20 points in salah and then after going over the 20 points, general uh, uh, meaning of the 20 points, then each and every point we will discuss inshallah in this lecture and in the forthcoming lectures we will complete that. So inshallah I will just briefly go through all these 20 points and then I will come back to the first point and I will give examples from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. First is five things to act upon generally when you're not praying your salah. Five things when you're out of salah. Meaning you prayed your fajr, the time between fajr and zuhr you need to do five things. So five things to act upon generally when you're not in the state of Salah. Five things to act upon during Wudu. Take good notes brothers and sisters in Islam. These are the very important points. Five things, everything that we deliver on this platform, it's all practical. We talked about how to raise your children. We gave 20 points. 20 points on that and alhamdulillah so many parents are acting upon them so all these lectures are available on youtube you can go and and check these lectures some parents come to me oh, my son has become rebellious and uh, what is the hull for this i say i've talked about this in so much detail that the talk in france was a detailed lecture about this how to raise your children from different umar from 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 the birth of the child for, for, till, till he's two years old, then four years old, then eight years old, then ten years old. All of that has been discussed in a lot of detail. And even in that, 20 points were given. Our barnamij of Rihla has 40 points. Our daily things that we need to think about every day are 30 points. For children, 20 points. And for concentrating in the prayer and to engage your ruh in the prayer, again, there are 20 points. Five points, generally to think about when you're not in the state of Salah. Five times to five things to work on when you are performing your wudu. Five during azan and five points in salah. Once again, five general things to work on when you're not in salah. Five during wudu. Five things during azan and five during salah when you are offering your prayer. So, how many points? Twenty. First point. First point. Generally, mutlaq, when you're not in the state of salah. Consider yourself to be in the state of salah when you're not in the state of salah. That's the first point. Consider yourself to be in the state of salah when you're not offering your prayer. That's the first point. It's very important. We will cover that inshallah in a lot of detail. I remember a long time ago, a sister from, from Bedford, she called me and she said, I can't concentrate in the prayer. And a brother, Habib Jami, was driving the car and, and I said to her, and I, I, need, I had to talk to someone else on the phone, and I only gave one answer. I said, sister, consider yourself to be in the state of Salah when you're not in the state of Salah. 
And then I put the phone down. Uh, I said, I have to, I have to talk to someone else. Brother Habib started to laugh. He said, that's a good way of getting rid of someone. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. What does that mean? Think of yourself being in Salah when you're not in Salah. Is that the answer for to, to tell someone to gain concentration in Salah? I will explain that in detail today. I told him that day as well. There will come a time and I will go through all the principles of this. Inshallah tonight, I will give a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this. This is a very important point. To think that you are, you are praying when you're not praying. Number two. When you are silent, when you're not talking, you make zikr, pasi and fas. You breathe with the name of Allah Jalla wa'ala. You breathe in with Allah's name and you breathe out with who? When you breathe in, you say So when I'm breathing in, I'm saying Allah. When I'm breathing out, I'm saying who? And that, you will never get tired with that. Because in order for you to live, you have to breathe. And if you breathe with the name of Allah Jalla wa'ala, you're not doing anything else. You're just breathing. Yes? So when you're silent, when you're not talking, when you're not reciting the Quran, when you're not saying anything, then you breathe in with the name of Allah and you breathe out with who? And the second thing you do, and that is to purify, purify your heart and purify your mind. The second thing within this, there are two points in this, is that you occupy your mind, you engage your mind in tafakkur. You, you contemplate, you think, you think about Akhirah, you think about your Tazkiyah, you think about the purification of the heart, you think about what have I achieved, how many Qaza Umri are there that I have to do, if I die today, what will happen to me, will I be held accountable, will I be punished, do I have many good deeds or not, so asking yourself and making Tawbah, this is called Tafakkur, this is called Tafakkur, and Tafakkur of one moment is better than 60 years of worship, Tafakkur of one moment is better than 60 years of worship, Meaning when you're silent, you're still doing zikrullah, you're still doing ibadat of Allah Jalla wa'ala. How? You're breathing with the name of Allah. So your breath is occupied in the zikr of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And even if you get tired with that, then your mind should be occupied in the zikr of Allah. How? Think about the akhirah. Think about your maut. Think about your daily activities. Think about your progress in your deen. Think about what have I achieved. My tazkiyah, my self-purification. I've closed the, um, the gate of my eyes, my ears, my hands. What is my achievement? What have I achieved? How, do I feel the nur of, of tazkiyah in my heart? So thinking about deen, my knowledge, tajweed, fiqh, necessary knowledge of deen, hukukullah, hukukul ibad. Am I fulfilling the rights of Allah? Am I fulfilling the rights of the, the creation of Allah Jalla wa'ala? The rights of my parents, the rights of my children. Thinking about it. So when we occupy our mind in the fikr of akhirah and fikr of the accountability in the hereafter, that itself is an act of worship. Just imagine that you're not doing anything. You're just thinking. And that is better than 60 years of worship. Thinking for how, how long? One full day? One hour? No. One moment of tafakkur is better than 60 years of worship. One moment of tafakkur is better than 60 years of worship. So when you're silent, you will be doing two things. What's the first one? Zikri, pasi and fast. You breathe in with the name of Allah, breathe out with who? Allahu, Allahu. And if you get tired of doing that, which you shouldn't do, you know there comes a time when you will be sleeping. People will be thinking that you're snoring, but you're saying Allahu, Allahu, Allah. Huh? And this is when you have beautiful dreams, when you have an adat. This takes you, zikri, pasi and fast takes you into a beautiful world of dreams. Huh? You see so many spiritual awliya, anbiya, ziyarat of the malaika and the angels if you make a habit of making zikri pasi and fas. And then before you go to sleep, you practice zikri pasi and fas also before you go to sleep. So this is when you're silent, when you're quiet, you make zikri pasi and fas. Number three. When you're talking, when you're articulating some words verbally, when you're saying something, when you're doing talaffuz of something, it should either be darood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recitation of Qur'an, tasbihat, general litanies and awrad, which we will we'll go through in a lot of detail later inshallah, or beneficial kalam. So one of four things should be happening. Huh? Either darood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you're not saying something, then two things. Either zikri pasi and fas or tafakkur, thinking about the accountability, thinking about your progress. 
in, in, the, in, the, in the spiritual path. And when you are saying something, then it should either be the root upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Or recitation of the Qur'an. Or tasbihat. The best tasbihat that we have given. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali razim. And you know the benefits of this. Subhanallah, one tree in Jannah. Alhamdulillah, another tree in Jannah. Huh? Another tree in Jannah. Wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And all the fadail of wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-ali razim. Seven ahadiths were given in the previous Urdu talk about the importance of wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-ali razim. There are so many benefits. It is a treasure from the treasures of Jannah. This very this spiritual litany, wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-ali razim. So all of this is in subhanallah, walhamdulillah. ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. All of these are in this. So either the root upon رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم recitation of Quran تسبيحات أو مفيد كلام. Before we talk, we ask ourselves, whatever I'm about to say, will that benefit me in dunya or in the hereafter? If the answer is yes, then we will say it. If the answer is no, then we will remain silent. So what are the four things? The root upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Second thing? Recitation of the Quran. Third? Tasbihat. Fourth? Beneficial speech. Before we talk, we ask ourselves, is this beneficial in dunya or akhira? If it is not beneficial in dunya or akhira, then we will not say it. Point number four. Practice attaining khushu in the nafal prayers. Practice do mashq of attaining khushu in the nafal prayers. Offer a lot of nafal prayers, tahajjud, ishraq, jashd, awabin, all of these nawafil and other extra additional nawafil. Make time for nafal prayers. And in these nafal prayers, one should work on the six general things to think about during salah. Imam Ghazali rahimahullah says, if one can force himself to attain concentration in nafal ibadat, the moment he will start his fard ibadah, he will automatically have con concentration. So you make yourself majboor in your nafal ibadah. So nafal ibadah is the training. You train yourself during nafal ibadah in attaining concentration. And Imam Ghazali rahimahullah says, if you make yourself majboor, you force yourself to concentrate, you keep doing that in your nafal ibadah, then when you will offer your fard ibadah, your ruh will be engaged in the fard ibadah. Now, in Nafal Ibadah, six things which we have discussed in the first lecture, and again I will advise all the brothers and sisters present here, it's important that you watch that lecture, Metaphysics of Salah, part one. And in that we, we discussed all of these points in a lot of detail. Briefly, I will go over these six points again. In your Nafal, and again at the end we will, we will mention this, but I don't think we will have time to go over this in detail at the end. Next lecture, inshallah, we will talk about it in more detail. In the light of Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. So, six points. So when you when you establish your nafal prayer during nafal ibadah, and this is something that we must be doing in our fard ibadah also. It is something to attain concentration in our fard ibadah. These six points are necessary. General things to think about during fard ibadah or nafal ibadah. And remember, these general things. That's one point. That's one point. There's 19 more points. It's important. A lot of people think because in our little booklets that we have given in the, the spiritual development booklets, we have given these six points. And people think that these six points, that's it, it is, it is six points. And we have another 14 points. No, these six points, that's just one point which divides into six. What is that one point? What should you be thinking about generally in the prayer to attain concentration? So this should be practiced in Nafal. What is that point? The general things to think about during the prayer, and in nafal, in the nafal ibadah, we will practice that. What's the first thing? If you can remind me. Those of you who were present in this, in this talk, in the last talk, can you remind me what, what is the first point? Just you, only you know it, right? Oh, two people, mashallah. There were hundreds of people in the last lecture. What's the first thing that we should be thinking about? General things during salah to attain concentration. Huh? Huh? Translation, translation of salah. So we should, we must memorize the translation of salah. First thing to think about, tarjima of salah, translation of salah. 
We must know the translation of Salah. I told you, if you go to a, some famous person in dunya and you want to please that person and he speaks a, a foreign language, a different language which you do not speak and, and, and you have his name and his titles written on that on a piece of paper and you are reading it or you have memorized his, his greatness or his big titles, you have memorized them but you do not know what you are saying and if you're going to that king or some, some prime minister or some famous person or some famous celebrity and you want to please that person and you are praising him in a language which you do not understand yourself, would you please that person? If that person was to know that this person is praising me but he doesn't even know what he's saying, would he be pleased? No. Imagine being in the court of Allah Jalla Imagine being in the presence of the creator of the heavens and the earth and we have been praying for 40 years and we do not know what at tahiyyatu means. We have been praying for 30 years but we do not know the meaning of Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika. We are praising Allah Jalla We are establishing our prayer and praising Allah. We want to please Allah Jalla wa'ala. But we do not even know what we are saying. What kind of salah is that? I'm not saying that salah is not established. I'm not saying that the salah is not performed. I'm not saying that you have to do qaza for that prayer. You have fulfilled the obligatory aqam of salah. You are communicating with the Lord of the heavens and the earth. You are talking to Allah Jalla wa'ala. This is your secret conversation with Allah Jalla wa'ala. But you do not even know what you are saying. I feel ashamed in asking you to raise your hands up if you know the translation of Salah. Hmm? I remember now there will be a lot of people who will raise their hands up but I remember in the past there was hardly anyone. How, how, how long have you been praying for? 20 years, never missed a prayer. Do you know the translation of Salah? No, I don't know what I'm saying to my Lord. I have seen reverts recently become Muslims and they have learned the translation of Salah. They know the Salah in Arabic and in English. But we are inborn Muslims. Muslims born in a, in a Muslim family, but we do not know what we are saying in our Salah.